In this guide the texturing will be discussed. Stretching the texture over the mesh is called UV mapping. This example contains several models that I shall apply texture to. They all use the same material. And it has a texture assigned. Texturing tools are in commands bar, on a mapping panel of the tab entitled Surface. I use the Edit UV2 Lin most of times. This tool is also available in context menu upon right click. The box with settings appears when tool is applied. Generally, the first UV channel is edited. This time I create new mapping for an object, so generate new is selected. Continuous mesh surface option considers the mesh as uniform, open edges are ignored where possible. New mapping is created as viewport projection. The tool was applied in top viewport, so top projection will be used. Here it is, textured object. I edit the mapping in UV mapper viewport. Click on material button. Specify material and UV channel to display. Mapper shows charts or fragments for an object. There could be several charts, for the same object. You can edit charts as a regular object. When you move the chart, the texture on respective polygons is moved. When you scale, the texture is stretched. It's wrapped several times since wrap is enabled on material. To disable wrapping of texture, I specify clamp. Set it on both, U and V. As you see, the texture is no longer wrapped. The mapping chart can be accessed on vertices level. When I move the vertex, mapping on respective vertex is affected. It is remarkable, the mesh has sharp edges, and vertices are duplicated. However, single vertex in chart affects mapping on three vertices at a time. That's because I used continuous mesh option. I delete the chart in new vMapper when editing is done. It does not affect the mapping applied. So, you can always clear the mapper after editing, and it's very preferable. If you wish to remove the mapping from an object, pick, remove UV tool, and click on an object. I'll create new mapping with unwrap method. I toggle continuous mesh off, so sharp edges are respected. As you see, the object has disjoint parts. And this time several disjoint charts were created. This chart is for top cap, because you can see it shining. When I hover the chart, other charts show red lines on shared edges. These charts can be connected with stitch tool. This is the same as using attach tool. Once shared edges are stitched, the mapping aligns perfectly on respective polygons. It is not aligned on edges where charts are disjoined. Once I join these charts with stitch tool, the mapping aligns perfectly. Charts are stitched, but they are not a single object. You can see it, by moving any chart. Newly created charts can be accessed on manipulator's level. Solid dots, are manipulators. Joint charts can share manipulators. But it might be hard to edit stitched mapping, especially when it's made out of a really lot of charts. In this case, Using continuous mesh surface option is preferable.
an attempt to unwrap continuously might fail. It might ask for more open edges, even thought we have enough of them. Continuous option has ignored them, just like we were trying to unwrap an entire closed volume. This time I select all polygons and deselect the bottom face. Unwrap continuously, and get a single chart for the top part of the model. The key benefit is that a pretty complex continuous mesh can be edited interactively. I can add more manipulators with insert tool. The pin tool here is a shortcut for insert tool. The unpin tool is a shortcut for a delete tool. When you delete manipulators, the chart reverts to initial. Note, you cannot edit vertices when chart is interactive and have manipulators. Committing interactive chart to editable mesh will let you access the vertices. So, you unwrap the mesh, pin it, adjust interactively, and commit. Let's try a different object. It has an extrusion in the middle. And a bottom faces. So, it can't be unwrapped at once. I select the top faces, and extrusion faces too. Then unwrap it continuously. The result is very inaccurate. Having a high degrees angles is a pain for unwrapper. Even if I try to fix it by pinning points, and refining the chart, the result is barely suitable. To achieve the better quality, let unwrapper deal with more flattened fragments. For example, Unwrap the flat top faces first. The unwrap is very accurate. Select the joint border faces of extrusion. Since the source mesh is considered continuous, new chart can use mapping points of neighbor polygons. I enable this by toggling pin border points option. You see the new chart is created next to its neighbor chart. It is not stitched, only manipulators are pinned to the proper positions. I unwrap the extrusion bottom face. It's perfectly aligned too. A slightly different way is to unwrap the bottom face first. Adjust and place it where you need it to be. Then select the rest. And unwrap it pinned. The new chart should be pinned on the outer border, and on the inner border too. OK. This could be both an advantage and a problem. Consider you have a mapping for the bottom faces. Now you want to create mapping for the border faces. If you leave pinning option, the result will be messed. It's pinned both to bottom and front faces. In order to be able to pin border unwrap to front face, I hide the bottom faces. Then unwrap the border faces again. I allow pinning, but ensure the ignore hidden geometry option is toggled on. This time, the border face is unwrapped and has pinned to front faces mapping only, and the texture is continuous on a mesh. One more example on this object. 
I create the unwrap for the top faces. Consider you need some specific layout of the mesh on texture. I commit the top faces chart and edit it on vertices level. Then stitch the extrusion border chart. Notice, it's now a single editable mesh, and I can adjust vertices here too. Then I stitch the bottom of extrusion. Now, it's all a single object. I close the UV mapper to clear it. It might be faster than deleting all objects. OK. There is one more thing you should know about Unwrapper. Consider this geometry, it has two islands connected with a single shared vertex. This geometry can't be unwrapped. And the following error reason is given, invalid open edges configuration, the problematic vertices are marked. The mesh fragments for unwrap should either share an edge, or should be completely disjoined. I select polygons of the lower island. Pick Detach tool. Ensure it will not detach to a new object, and no drag is enabled. I click on polygons. Now, they are disjoint from the rest of geometry. The vertex is not connected. And entire model can be unwrapped. Two charts were created. Move on to the next example. I enable the outline, thus I can see in open edges. This torus has no open edges at all. I'll create the seam by detaching the corner of the object. Two cross-section seams are available, but it's not enough and additional seam is needed. On a real models you will always need to create seams by hand. Use the knife tool. Do not update normals to prevent changes in shading and smoothness. Switch to vertices level and pick vertices one by one, starting from the open edge. You can tap control key to hover the needed vertex. As soon as you reach the open edge, the tool will end up with new seam. You can unwrap this fragment. However, the chart created is wrong. It has completely ignored the newly created seam. That's because the continuous mesh surface option was toggled. Without this option the chart is very accurate. And the surface is evenly wrapped with texture. The final example is an old tree. I disable the light and ensure the outline is toggled. Using the knife tool, I separate one branch from the rest. As you see, it's disjoined. Then I create a seam from one tip to another. To commit the knife operation, I hold the control key and click. And a small seam over here. I move the vertices aside to show you how unwrapping of this fragment will work. The rest is very alike. Create as few seams as possible. Try to place seams in areas that would barely seen in game. There is no perfect seaming solution for any case. Each time it's up to you to decide whether a certain seam is good enough.
Once seams are created, entire model is unwrapped, with continuous mesh surface option toggled off. Several charts were created, and lay one over another. They are about the same size, so texture is stretched improperly on the model. I select all charts, and press rescale button. Each chart size reflects the overall size of respective fragment on a model. Thus, the stretch of texture is uniform. That's all about UV mapping for now.